Good evening, Simon here. Explosive Action, it's that time again. It's time for the end of year top metal albums. We've got 20 to take a look at, so let's get into it. So we're here to take a quick look at the top albums of 2022. And I've got to say up front, it's been a pretty strong year. Uh, my total list is bordering on 30. Uh, I'm not going to take you through 30. This is the honorable mentions list that you can see on the screen here. Links also in the description, make sure you check them out. Um, but we're going to get into the actual top 20. Uh, I have tried this year to try and actually do an order of things. It's pretty loose, particularly in 20 through to 11. I'm not wedded to the real order. Uh, but the top five, they are definitely the top five albums of the year. So top 20. I'm not going to hold physical items from uh, 20 through to 11. We're just going to talk about them quickly. Number 20 on the list is the new Father Befouled crowned in Veneficum. Uh, it's definitely their most refined and complete slab of death metal that uh, the band has put out. And uh, yeah, it's definitely an absolutely worthy contender for the top 20. So I'm happy to have this one in here. Uh, number 19, we have the new Blute Aus Nord with Disharmonium absolutely frightening return to form uh, after the previous album which I loved and made it into my last uh, top 20 which was almost their happy tripped out black metal album this time he's just dug deep and he's taken us straight to hell with him it is a frightening frightening album uh, number 18 we have Inanna with Void of Unending Depths uh, fantastic album 10 years after their um, particularly awesome so for more album uh, in Nana return with a more streamlined but uh, still very impressive multi-layered death metal album definitely check this one out number 17 ripped to shreds with Jubian their new album this year um, on relapse records he's certainly uh, reaching for new heights uh, of late uh, very pummeling but still melodic Swedish style death metal from Andrew Lee quite prolific guy um, it has his trademark mind-blowing solos and going on to relapse has not changed anything one iota the production might even be a little bit better it's a really really top quality album 16 we have uh, Theriomorph with Diabolical Blood Swords fantastic title this is a really densely packed very very creative Finnish black metal album it mixes the darkness of Ma or Me I'm not too sure how you say it their Ebony Tower album with the fury of something like last year's Spectral Wound and maybe early 1349. That's what you get with Theriomorph and it is an excellent, excellent album. At 15 we get Blasphematory, The Lower Catacombs. This is some disgusting, murky, down-tuned death metal. Definitely one of the filthiest releases of this year. It came out earlier this year. We've had a lot of filthy ones this year, but my god, this thing is, is just swampy. It is fantastically dirty album, so definitely check it out if you like that kind of thing. Uh, number 14, Nocturnal Triumph with their self-titled uh, third album, uh, and probably the best album from this band so far. Relentless Swedish black metal attack. Absolutely love these guys. Their second album I never managed to get a copy of. It's a Goto RX, so it was a blink and you'll miss it kind of deal. But this third one, quite easy to get, still copies to, uh, available now on CD and LP, so make sure you pick it up. Number 13, Altars Ablaze, Life Desecration. This is blistering, absolutely blistering Black Death attack from members of Heaving Earth. Uh, absolutely ferocious debut album from these guys. It's, it's, it's in your Angel Corpse kind of thing, but with the Heaving Earth guys, their talent behind it, absolutely amazing stuff. Number 12, we have Offer Wintran with It Often Befalls Those. I've been raving about this to a lot of people. Uh, the follow-up to their 2019 debut, Offer Wintran double down on the frenetic, melodic, and pretty uplifting, it's got to be said, black metal riffs. Really, really great band out of the UK. Definitely worth checking them out. They're on Death Prayer Records, so uh, yeah, make sure you pick up a copy. And at number 11, rounding out this top well, the bottom end of the top top 20 we have uh and this was kind of painful to put it at 11 i really wanted to put it into the uh, top 10 but something had to slide and that is ostots with 
Madarika Zoya. Still hard to say, but it's an absolute cacophony of atmospheric black metal riffs from Spain. Love this album. It's probably the best album from this band, and if you want to get into them, I say start here. Before we move into the top 10 and I start showing some actual albums, I want to do a special artist mention. And it's the artist's name that I cannot say, and so I'm going to put his name just here. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to say it, but this guy has had an incredible 2022 in the quantity and quality of the releases that he's put out. I haven't even managed to get them all yet, um, but he put out two albums through his Trolldom band, one and two, this one being a double LP. Absolutely amazing atmospheric black metal, just melodic and chaotic. Of course, two albums from Beketh Nexamu. Finally getting myself on the train of Beketh Nexamu. There are so many albums to pick up. This one is a double LP and is fantastic, of course. But he didn't stop there. This one is a triple LP. Oh my god. And I'm not even going to try to say the names again on these ones. Um, oh, monstrous, monstrous thing. You can trust me, there are three records in there. Just look at the covers and make sure you go pick these ones up. But all this stuff is good. All of the all the stuff from that band is good. Um, this one particularly is one that stood out for me is the new Grieve album. Um, this could have gone in the top ten pretty quickly, but I haven't had it that long. So that's what made me. That's what instigated me doing this kind of special artist mention. So this Grieve is absolutely fantastic. Um, and in the second album from this particular act that he's involved in. But also there's been uh, the new uh, Nipahawa, Nip oh God, I can never say the name, uh, Nipalahan album. It's only on CD so far, I'm kind of waiting for the LP on that one. And two other bands of his that I've not even checked out yet, also did 2022 releases. I gave them a quick YouTube listen and went, yeah, that's him, it's good. Uh, we've got Ars Hamu, again, not sure how you say this one, and Natfard, two and just just two more excellent black metal bands all the stuff he does is just a variation on a theme with either all by himself or he's got different people on other instruments or vocals and it's just all excellent everything he does is excellent so that's why i wanted to shout him out the guy that i can't pronounce his name into the top 10 now and starting at number 10 we have the new album by cosmic putrefaction this is Crepuscular Dirge for the Blessed Ones and my god they're blessed this is the third album from this one man plus drums uh, project from Gabriel uh, Graham Aglia I think is how you say his name Italian bloke Italian band um, and as the band name describes this is cosmic death metal with a focus on decay a deathly dirge and a homage to the elder gods fantastic album uh, think of your cathelists and your time ghouls that's a solid reference point for this kind of thing uh, universally estranged but the chaos on this album is a different kind of breed it is dark and swirling otherworldly riffing styles it's fantastic alternating sort of bludging instrumentals and just ambient passages Lots of intricacies. It's a it's a big thing that you've got to really digest. It's taken me about. It's taken me a few months to really get into this one. I, at first, it didn't grab me as much, but I had to just dig into it a bit further. It's one of those ones that the more you listen to, the more rewarding it is. Definitely a particularly excellent album from Cosmic Putrefaction, the Crepuscular Dirge for the Blessed Ones. Number nine is another one that's just ridiculous to pronounce. The band name I can just about do, but the title of the album, oh, we're going to make a meaty, meaty mess out of this one. This is Zompantli with Tlazkalitzitli. We'll go with that. I don't know. It's the it's the Zompantli album is just what I call it. Um, new project from Brian Ortiz of the US, Zabalba. Um, this is some just thundering death doom with thematically it sort of centers on the pre-hispanic mexico that's the thing that they're going for here um it's a three-piece project it fits in nicely with things like spectral uh spectral voice um also has elements of like disembowelment quite a lot of elements uh when it when it crawls it really crawls down to their pace um but you know it'll it'll stop really slow 
and have like, you know, four bars of miscellaneous blasting with clean guitars over the top. Very much like this embowment would do. Um, the second track on this one has a riff that is a dead ringer for Morbid Angels, Where the Slime Live. I really liked that. I'm not too sure if it's intentional, but I certainly picked up on it. Um, but it's just a slower, dirgier version of that. Um, throughout, there's lots of use of tribal instruments, you know, just to really um, ram home that, that sort of Aztec theme. Um, as well as guitar and vocals, Brian's actually credited with a didgeridoo an animal flute and shells, which I assume he's playing sort of like castanets and shaking, that kind of thing. Um, but it, it makes it just a nice, well-rounded album. Uh, so you get, you know, chanting with like acoustic guitar and then whistles and crunching riffs and all together. It's just fantastic. It is a fantastic 10-ton hammer of a Death Doom album here from Zompantli. At number eight, we have the second part of the Triad trilogy from Aura. This is an fantastic Swiss black metal album. Epic, mighty riff salad, punishing, alternating, blasting drums and rapid fire double kicks. But it's bathed in this really, really warm, lush atmosphere and production. Raging, raging, but atmospheric black metal that's similar to band like Tardigrada, also from the same country in Switzerland. Uh, or Canadians like Forderes, it's, it's in that kind of realm of very, very warm sounding atmospheric black metal. Uh, it has the high pitch shrieking, it's got to be said, shrieking screams of uh, like Heca, Hecate, uh, Hecate Enthroned, however you want to say that guy. Um, the vocals are just banshee in this, there's so, so much screaming. Um, and uh, yeah, this is it's just an amazing album. The first part of Triade was excellent, but this second part for me is just absolutely flawless. Um, it, it does everything I want from black metal. Absolutely love it and I'm eagerly awaiting part three. This is Ara Triad 2 uh, called Hemera. So yeah, definitely check out this band if you've not checked out Ara. One of the nicest surprises for me this year comes at number seven. This is Doldrum with The Knocking or The Story of the Sound that preceded their disappearance. A mouthful, but what an album. Uh, this is a cult sounding but folk influenced black metal and I'm not talking you European folk of Viking maidens and bridge tolls. Nothing to do with any of that stuff. It's nothing to do with that kind of folk. This is the folk tale of a grizzled gold prospector. This is mining folk um, and it's just it's just amazing. It's got it's a US band um, and it sort of fits into like the newer enslaved style, uh, sort of progressive black metal, and even the production is a bit like that. Parts of Arcturus, um, harken back a bit to Verbuen's End, uh, of course your Panopticon kind of reference as well. It's a fantastic, a fantastic debut from this band. The drummer and the vocalist um, from Salem's band, Salem band Gallows is in this one, the drummer and the vocalist. Um, and there's a guitarist that's in this band and he goes by the name of Oh My Back. I thought that was brilliant. They've all got trick names on this one. We've got Jimmy, Oh My Back, and we've got Rat DeVoe and the terrific Don McKinnon. And there they are there. And this photo, I think, gives you an, a, a good description of the kind of folk I'm talking about. It's, it's not the folk that you usually get with black metal. Um, lyrically, it's very, very creative in dealing with something that is... Uh, you know, it's some, some kind of creature or some kind of entity or person or something that is just taking out these miners. And that is the, the lyrics, the progress through the song titles, um, the knocking, the visitor, the abduction, the offering and the disappearance. You can see the progression just in the song titles. Um, by all rights, this is the kind of album that should have blown up this year. Uh, but I don't know many people talk about it. I know Ben Brain Smasher has talked about this. I think he interviewed them. Uh, but there's not a single review on Metal Archives for this album, and that's just a crying shame. Um, it's on the band's own Catafalque uh, record label that they share with Gallows. Maybe that's uh, harmed the distribution, I'm not too sure. But this is a stellar example of what you can do with modern black metal, and I definitely recommend you check out Doldrum. At number six, we have Vacuous with Dreams of Dysphoria. I know this made a lot of people's lists. This is a stellar, stellar debut of absolutely crushing Death Doom out of the UK. 
Um, and I think many people, including me, did a double take when this thing dropped. Uh, I don't, don't recall many people talking about the demo from a couple of years before. Um, this kind of just showed up at my record store and I thought that's an amazing cover and then listened to it and bought it and here we are and it's making my end of year list pretty damn high churning uh, dissonant riffs over a rumbling bass thundering double kicks this album takes me back to the very first Crips demos um, and the EP from Cruciamentum that's where this feels like to me those early Crips demos were just amazing so you know to hear that kind of thing in vacuous is very pleasing to me. Uh, the third track on this one, Matriarchal Blood, it starts off so utterly swampy, it needed a cowbell to raise it from the depths. Cowbell, death doom. Trust me, it's amazing. Uh, halfway through, then it reaches this filthy crescendo and is hurled back into the swamp with a splash, leaving mud all over the rest of the album. It is a filthy and nasty thing, but it is supremely heavy and incredibly enjoyable i'm very keen to hear where vacuous go from here we're into the top five now and this is a pretty well ordered list took me a bit of time to get it right i'm pretty happy with how it's landed number five is jade the pacification of death atmospheric death metal out of germany and spain mixed members uh, only just received this lp but i've been listening to it digitally for about five weeks now um, it is a flawless atmospheric death metal album. I can't pick anything wrong with this. Uh, I was put onto this band by my buddy Roman, so cheers for that recommendation. I had no idea who these guys were. They had a demo in 2018, but I'd never heard it. What you get here is a very highly emotive, and I mean the emotions are running in this thing, uh, between Bolza and Ruins of Beverast is a nice comparison, I think. The speed hangs almost around exactly where Ruins do invokes some of the darkness that they do but it's the lead guitar in this thing that is like a bright shining sun over that darkness and it is just stunning the lead in this is stunning um, it's not like tricky solos it's just well thought out and as i said emotive they, they know exactly what to do with that lead guitar and it's amazing um, it, it sort of plays in a way that like my dying bride does like strong chords that just pull at you that's what the lead guitar does on this and it just keep oh man it is so good the drums are very furious but they're restrained enough to never really blast there's one point when it might get kind of fast but nothing i would ever call blasting it it, it is not that kind of death metal uh vocally it goes between that ruins of beveras deep deep sounding vocal that you know um, and then Bowles' sort of, you know, crazy guy shouting in the corridor techniques that he does, you know, that, you know, that kind of thing that he does. It, it's all over this as well. Um, very, very, very nice mix of vocals. Uh, it is an immense, immense sounding album with a huge production. It comes highly recommended. If these guys are not signed to 20 bucks spin for their second album, then I'll be shocked. Number four is an album that I have been playing relentlessly for the last few months. I literally have not taken it out of my CD player, as you may have seen in the previous video. It's a multi-stacker player, so I have no reason to take this out. I'm talking about the self-titled full-length debut by Akaliti. This is an outstanding Finnish black metal album. Uh, the band did some demos and an EP in 2015, but this is their first full-length, and it is just, it's just everything that I like in Finnish black metal. Absolutely amazing. Four piece band, they have uh, Mokataida members and they play a very early Emperor sound. Right? It's it's a Luciferian brand of black metal, similar to that early, early Emperor sound. Um, the song titles, I mean, that tells you that they're just alternate names for the devil. Track one, Belial. Track two, Astaroth. Belphegor, Samael, Baal, Lilith, Satan, Lucifer. They are the song titles. You know what you're getting with this kind of album. Uh, there's no escaping the lyrical tone. The musically, this thing follows very closely to In the Night Side Eclipse. Um, very similar production, even. And it stays close to that style of riff. Uh, it's drenched in keyboards. It, it's just totally 1994 sounding. But to me, unlike bands like Tholkandra, this doesn't come across as a tribute band. This feels... 
this feels original when it's still pulling on the old school. It is just an amazing album to me. I've been playing it, like I said, many, many times. Over the past few months, it just is wearing its influences on their very dark satanic cloaks. This is Akaliti, self-titled album. At number three, this is Alters with Ascetic Reflection. And this was a surprise to me that it was even coming out. Uh, it's nine years since the debut album, which came out, Paramesia. Um, it was one of my favorite Australian death metal albums when that thing came out. The band quietly split up after that album, but then mega fan Brendan Sloan, who's in another death metal band called Convulsing, also excellent, he convinced them to get back together, and then he took over the vocals and bass duties. Um, other members are Lewis from Ignivimus on guitar, and Alan from Stargazer on drums. So in terms of Australian death metal, it's it's just all stars right here with Alters. Um, they play a technical, uh, but also atmospheric, very dissonant brand of death metal. Uh, all those previous bands I just mentioned is a good representation of the sound that you get from Alters, particularly that convulsing sound now that Brendan is involved with the band. Um, perhaps also, you know, if you know bands like Ulcerate, um, there's a touch of them in Alters as well. It's definitely not standard song structures, and it is unbelievably good live. I had the absolute fortune to see them uh, a few months ago, and absolutely amazing set. So. Alters Ascetic Reflection. I really hope more people can get a hold of this one. Number two now, and you could get me on a technicality if you really wanted to. The band calls this an EP. Metal Archives calls it an EP. But as the album is 13 seconds longer than Rain in Blood, at 29 minutes and 12 seconds, I am calling this an album. This is Eschaton with Horacle. This is an absolutely furious relentless bestial black and death metal album out of victoria the fourth release from this band for my money it is their best it's their shining achievement so far the production is improved but it contains all that same urgency from their previous albums that hooked me all those years ago um, it's for me their best album since their debut absolutely astonishing um, the guitars have a real modern sort of high gain sound to them like it's I'm not going to say genty because that gives you a bad uh, taste in your mouth when you say that, but it's got that kind of sound, that tone to the guitar, but Beastial Black Death, it's, it works so well. The vocals, they get so extreme at some points that the band just said, nah, let's add some pitch shifting and get, get that vocal right down there into demon speak. Why the hell not? Make it even more loud. Um, the band put on one of the loudest shows, speaking of loud, that I have ever seen uh, this year, um, and they just cemented this release for me. I saw them play in Sydney, I was up close to the stage, and I remember when we, when, when uh, me and my buddies, when the set ended and they said goodnight and walking off the stage, we all just looked at each other and went, Jesus Christ, because it was deafening and it was tight. And that is Eschaton with Horacle. It is deafening, it is tight, it is bestial black death perfection. Before I talk about the number one album of the year for me, there's a few things that I've not managed to hear yet, and I'm gonna call them out here. Uh, the new Imprecation. Copies have not trickled out yet for me. Uh, I usually get Dark Descent stuff locally. Hasn't made its way here, so that's been unfortunate. I haven't heard a single note from the new Imprecation. Um, two smaller bands that people may not be aware of, but they're very important to me. Uh, the new Imha Tarakat. Uh, it's available, but it's, it came out too late and I haven't been able to order it yet. Same for the new Moynok, another fantastic band. Again, available too late, I need to go and order it. Um, and bad on me, the new Enchantment. I'm sorry, Mark G. I haven't listened to it yet. I'm a bad, bad YouTuber. I need to get to that album. Oh, my apologies. Um, the new Dream Unending, I've only just gotten it and only played it the once and it's the kind of thing that I need to listen to a few more times to really uh, to, to really get into it, so I've not been able to rate it or anything like that. Uh, the new Universally Estranged, uh, I'm dying to hear that, but uh, the copies from Blood Harvest haven't again trickled their way out here yet, so we will see. The new Chasm, the, the Chasm album, um, it's shipped to me, but it won't arrive, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, 
until next year, which is only a day away. So yeah, they're the kind of things that I haven't managed to listen to yet. And of course, there's dozens and probably hundreds of other things that you have not seen in this list that I have not talked about. So um, definitely after we get to number one, I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments about what else I should be listening to from 2022. And at number one, easily my favorite album of the year, it was no question about this. As soon as I heard it and I kept listening to it over and over, it, it was gonna be number one. There was no way around it. The new Faceless Burial at the full foothills of Deloration, and I still don't know what a Deloration is. Album of the year, absolutely. Um, Melbourne band, Faceless Burial. They took their already very solid formula from 2019 Speciation album, added a whole lot more of that Blood Incantation influence, Gore Guts Obscura, a whole lot more of that weirdness into the sound. But they still kept their same filthy necrot sounding death metal as well. Um, the guitars are just more creative and more technical this time around. And they even have more groove than before. Lots a lot more hooks in this thing. Um, the bass is more prominent, more interesting. Max's drums. Just un just, just amazing. Unbelievable. He's ridiculously tight drummer. And live is quite insane. Uh, the production is spot on with every instrument bright. The growled vocals are subdued just enough so that the music takes center stage for everything. You can hear every note, every instrument. It's exactly how a death metal album should sound as far as I'm concerned. Um, and if you are upset, if you're one of those people that were very upset that Blood Incantation dropped an ambient album, uh, then check out this one from Faceless Burial because I think it fills that void very very nicely um, this is world stage death metal and it comes out of uh, out of Victoria uh, Australia represent I'm extremely excited faceless burial at the foothills of Deloration so that's my top 20 albums of the year um, everything that I've listed is great all of the honorable mentions that I showed at the start they're great it has been a strong year I didn't mention any EPs I'll quickly mention some good stuff now Obviously, Worm, Blue Nothing is a fantastic EP. I'm hanging out for when he does the full length that comes after it. It's going to be great. The Moonlight Sorcery Piercing Through the Frozen Eternity EP came out very early in the year. It was excellent, and they have a new one that's digitally out now, and the album's come out next January, so very excited for that. Uh, the Ravenous Dusk the Dead of Night demo slash EP, um, the uh, main musician behind Nazul. Definitely check that one out. Also, uh, Dodskvad did uh, their Kronike number two demo, which I picked up on the Compendium CD of the two demos. Fantastic, very uh, very old school sounding death metal, that one, absolutely love it. So some good EPs came out this year as well. But that was my top albums of the year 2022. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found some things in here that you hadn't already heard. What I want to hear is your top 20s, your top 10s, your top 5s, your top 1, your favourites of the year in the comments below. Let's have a discussion. Tell me some things that I've missed. I know there's plenty of things that I've missed. And uh, yeah, let's just have another great, great metal year in 2023. There's already going to be some great stuff coming out I already know about. So very, very exciting times ahead. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, check out that thing check out that thing. The next video will be the movie version of this top uh, releases of the year. So look for that one in a few days. And thanks for watching.